If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creature. I was like, I'm not a new creature. <laughs> and and it, it all just came, God used all of that to just kind of, the weight of my sin uh, at that point, he used all of that as just kind of to crush me. Welcome to another Dulos View. Today we have Brother Luke Leader, good brother in Christ that uh, we've been going to the same church for a little while now. So I just want to sit down and get to know him a little bit. So Luke, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So let's start at the beginning. Where were you born? Where'd you grow up? What was your upbringing like? I was born in Arkansas. Um, mainly grew up in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Um, we lived there the majority of the time, fifth grade, all through high school. Um, grew up two parents. Uh, they've been married for over 50 years uh, wow. at this point. Uh, I've got one younger sister. She's four years younger than me. She's married and has her own family uh, and stuff. So, But um, pretty normal childhood. My dad uh, was, uh, he worked for the phone company, so we moved around a little bit, but primarily uh, lived most of the time in Fort Smith. Okay. Okay. So you are, or you were in the military, and so how did your trajectory go from your childhood to joining the military? Yeah, you know, I was um, looking for a way to pay for college, hmm. and um, that uh, my dad was in the Air Force, and that kind of okay. started things off, and then uh, got me interested in the military. Hmm. And uh, I knew I, I didn't want to go enlisted. Uh, I wanted to be an officer. And I wanted to go to college and um, kind of going back a little bit, even before that, uh, we, uh, in high school, I uh, had a girlfriend, she ended up getting pregnant, we ended up getting married. Mm. And uh, so I had a, I had a new baby at 18 years old, graduate high school. Man. And uh, so really needed a way to pay for college mm -hmm. and uh, applied for an army ROTC scholarship and an air force ROTC scholarship. Went through the interview process for both. I didn't end up getting the Army one, which is the one I wanted. I ended up getting the Air Force one, which uh, was great. And it paid for uh, my room and board, which is, was the married student housing on campus. It paid for that mm -hmm. and uh, paid my tuition and books and even gave me a stipend every month. And so that's, that's what got me uh, into the military. It was a great way to pay for college. Okay, so being in the military and now, I... I tried to get into the army when I was in college as well, but for whatever reason, it didn't, it didn't work out. But I heard as I was, I was going through that process that being in the Air Force is a lot better because they take care of you more. And then it seems to be like one of those, uh, more of the uppity branch of the military, so for lack of a better term. Did you get that impression versus the Air Force versus the Army? Everybody says that, you know, that I was an officer and so it the life was a little better than probably being enlisted, but the Air Force bases that I was at were all really nice. and. I'm sure there were bad ones, uh, but uh, I was a I was a I was a lawyer officer, so I I had really good duty assignments. So I had a duty assignment in Southeast Virginia, right on the coast, uh, in Hampton, Virginia, really close to Virginia Beach, and so it was just gorgeous there, mm. you know, really close to the beach. And then my second assignment was in San Antonio, mm. which is another awesome area of the country. Just uh, South Texas was great. That's where I met my wife. Mm. Uh, now, so okay, cool. But, uh, so being in the being in the military, and I want to get to your testimony because you were recently saved. You haven't been saved for very long. It's about a year and a half or two. Is yeah. that right? But yeah. before we get to that point, I want to talk about how being in the military. Because I had a friend who was there, and he came across all kinds of different religious beliefs, all kinds of different upbringings, and uh, you know, people have all kinds of different um, religious faiths, and then they're thrown together, and they they need to work as a team. So I'm just wondering how how did coming into contact with those different religions kind of influenced you spiritually, even though you weren't saved at the time? What, what kind of, did it, or did it have any impact on you at all? At Man, when I, was, when I was in the Air Force, uh, I was a very carnal person. Um, mm -hmm. I was not religious at all, if you, if you want to put it that way. I was, I was raised, and, and maybe getting into my testimony, I was, I was raised, uh, we went to a Methodist church uh, starting out, and then we went to a Southern Baptist church uh, after that. And... Uh, after, after, you know, got divorced when I was in law school, and uh, after that, uh, 
went on active duty uh, after I passed the bar exam. And so when I was in the Air Force, I, I was very carnal. Uh, the things of God were far from my mind. Uh, I was looking to um, be out there, have a good time, and do my job, and be a great trial lawyer. And so I was really into work. I was really into, when I wasn't working, you know, there was always a group of folks that wanted to go have a good time. And so we'd go do that. And uh, that was my life in the Air Force. It was very carnal. So nothing about that. But there, but there are, there were, um, you know, there were chaplains uh, that were there that were friends, but the chaplains would go out and party with us too. Mm. So, um, you know, it was a very, it, it's a very broad road kind of uh, acceptance of of all faiths of uh, your I, I would think you would have a hard time if you were a biblical Christian uh, in the military probably um, you definitely have some challenges um, because looking back on it uh, my circle of friends weren't certainly weren't uh, biblical mm -hmm. Christians uh, I had friends that were Roman Catholics friends that were um, Protestant, kind of not very involved with their faith, as you can imagine, the kind of folks that like to go out and party. And uh, but we also worked hard too a lot, but we partied hard on the weekends. So, um, you know, never really went to church when I was on active duty, and uh, unless it was when I came home to visit my folks and we'd go to church uh, on the weekend or something that I was home. Okay. But um, I, I was really far away from God mm -hmm. at that time. So going back, um, now that you've, you spent X amount of years in the military, is there anything that you would go back to tell your younger self about the time that you were in there and, and what you experienced or maybe something you would have done differently while you were there? Um, yeah. If anything, I would go back and share the gospel with myself. Mm. And... Uh, it, it was a really not a good time in my life. Uh, I was just gotten divorced. I was living in a totally different part of the country. I had two kids uh, with my uh, ex-wife at that time. They were both really little. Uh, one was uh, second grade, mm. third grade. The other one was four or five years old, um, preschool kind of age. And so you can imagine trying to get them, trying to see them flying across the country, that mm. kind of thing. and you know, just being a, a young, you know, 20, mid 20 year old kid that, you know, was just out on their own with a job that paid pretty well and had some disposable income and was very self-involved and just wanted to party and work hard and do what I wanted to do. So it was a, not a, not a good time in my life. And uh, yeah, there'd be a lot of things that I could go back and tell myself, but the main thing would be, I'd be wanting to share the gospel with myself and be more, more, you know, spend more time with the two kids uh, mm -hmm. than I got to. But mm -hmm. that was definitely a challenge uh, being so far apart. Well, that brings us perfectly to that. My next question was, how did you come to Christ? And I know you came to Christ much later, but so what or who, or how did, you know, God use somebody to tell you what the gospel was and then and, and then this time around to actually take with you where you actually repented and, and trusted sure, in Christ. Sure, yeah. Let, let, me, let me start out by saying that uh, kind of going back, you know, I was raised, we went to church every weekend, you know. I was, uh, we were in the Methodist, United Methodist Church okay. uh, starting out. Um, I was in, you know, from the time I was elementary school kid, we, you know, my folks would take me to the kid programs at church and, you know, the kid choir stuff and uh, was an acolyte, you know, where you'd light the candles and stuff like that in the church. And then um, somewhere around fifth or sixth grade, somewhere in there, I started going with a friend of mine to a, a Baptist church for like vacation Bible school and um, maybe like some Wednesday night stuff or something like that where they had uh, stuff for kids our age. And it started hearing about salvation and all this kind of stuff and he never heard anything like that uh in the methodist church so we started asking some questions i guess with my folks and then um somehow about that time they started a confirmation class so we went through this confirmation thing where at the end you 
make a profession of faith uh, in Christ, and it's basically uh, a bunch of kids up there, and you're just repeating what this adult's telling you to say. It's not. It's kind of just a superficial work kind of thing that you go kind of ritual thing you kind of go through I guess in that system and um, then after that we ended up leaving the, the Methodist Church the Baptist Church um, nobody in our family had been immersed baptized mm -hmm. we'd all been sprinkle. baptized as kids I guess okay. sprinkle baptized and uh, so I remember that clearly that was eighth or ninth grade kind of time frame uh, for me so we all got, we all joined the church and all got baptized there uh, together. Yeah. Um, there was nothing more than, um, you know, they'd ask you a couple, do you, do you uh, make a profession that Jesus Christ is your savior and go through that? And it was basically a yes or no kind of thing before they baptized you. And it, it, there was no real probing or questioning or anything like that about the basis of your faith. Yeah. And so we were, you know, we were basically in at that point, you know, I was, uh, they had a great youth group. I was involved in the youth group there and we went on mission trips and I basically was there every time, but I, I wasn't there because of wanting to pursue a relationship with God. I was there because it was fun and the social aspects and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, my lifestyle when I was in high school, especially, was pretty far away from God, even though superficially I would go to, I, I was an athlete, I played football um, in high school, and went to Fellowship of Christian Athlete hmm. camps, and our football coach was big into Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and we'd do devotionals and stuff like, team devotionals and stuff like that, and I went to all that stuff. and. Hmm listened and you know i sat through preaching at church and we had a preacher that um went through and preached through you know ex sequentially through like ephesians and romans and hmm. and you know looking back at the the invitation every week you know they were if you want to be saved pray this prayer and you'll you can have a relationship with christ and and so you know there, there's no assurance in that kind of system mm -hmm. and so you're you're constantly you know as a kid you're constantly sitting there saying you know i better say that prayer this time say, just to did you do it multiple just to times? make sure and mm -hmm. it's like every week you're huh. you're you're going through that in your mind because there's absolutely no assurance because there's no obedience there was no transformation mm -hmm. uh no no real repentance or anything that had been done at that point and there's no one that's telling you that those what the real what the real gospel is mm -hmm. it's this it's a it's a fake kind of gospel that you grew up hearing that i grew up hearing uh anyway and so um you know my there was no obedience there really i mean there was massive disobedience you know there was uh party kind of lifestyle ended up girlfriend got pregnant and uh that was a tough time. We ended up getting married and uh, had a lot of help from a lot of folks to kind of get set up. And we ended up both getting into, we both graduated uh, later that year, had the baby, had Ben, my first uh, child mm. in uh, July. And then we were both uh, headed up. We both got accepted to the University of Arkansas. and. Uh, a lot of things came together. I got that scholarship. She got a bunch of scholarships. We got some grants and stuff, and we were able to go to college. And uh, so started, you know, juggling. We were both juggling college and baby and all that for f five years. I guess we were on the five-year plan. Wow. Um, during that time, you know, we were still going to, you know, Baptist Church uh, up there while we were in college, you know, on and off. Uh, we both still liked to party. Um, so party even even with the kids and oh, stuff and man. going to class and hmm. all that so we um, you know we the the lifestyle was still not one of obedience uh, to God there were, because there had been no conversion mm -hmm. um, at least for me anyway I can't speak for anybody else but for me there uh, 
there wasn't uh, you know it's um it was it was five years by the grace of god we graduated got a degree i got accepted to law school um got my commission in the in the air force through the rotc program i finished that program out and then uh, moved to tulsa went to law school um we uh went to church at some Baptist churches here in the area. And it was the same thing uh, that heard growing up, you know, it was uh, um, once you make a profession of faith, you're saved, you shouldn't question it. There was no call to obedience, no call to change life, no, nothing, no, uh, nothing like that. And our lifestyle, my lifestyle reflected it. You know, it was drink too much and, you know, didn't spend enough time with the kids and and it ultimately led to uh the um, wife and i getting divorced my third year of law school mm-hmm. and um after that luckily by god's grace i finished law school i passed the bar exam and went on active duty in the air force uh, and so that took me to a different part of the country uh from away from you know everything here and uh Kids ended up moving to uh, Houston at, at one point, and so it was hard. Them being so little, just getting to see them and stuff. So, kind of already talked a little bit about my time in the Air Force. Uh, it was uh, five years of a lot of working. I worked really hard. I was a prosecutor. I started out prosecuting cases, and then I did well enough with that. They moved me over to defend service members that have been charged with crimes. Mm-hmm. And I did that. Uh, that was my last job in the Air Force. It's kind of like a public defender okay. uh, for military members, uh, as opposed to prosecuting attorney for military members. So, mm-hmm. um, prosecuted and defended guys for a lot of drug crimes, mainly uh, okay. some rape cases and mm-hmm. child pornography cases and, and different stuff like that. But wow. um, getting out of that um, came. Uh, Kind of fast forward a little bit, uh, got out of the Air Force, uh, met, met my wife now. Well, we were on both on active duty okay. and um, got married and then we both got out and uh, got a job here in Oklahoma. I was in private practice and then I got the job that I, I have now uh, after a year private practice. and. It was really about, uh, it was May uh, of 2020. Uh, I remember exactly when it was. Um, there, there had been a period of time, especially with all the, everything that was going on and all the uncertainty that was happening. And I, I knew God, God was working. He was working in my life. And I knew that, um, my life still wasn't right. I still had no assurance of any kind of salvation and, uh, God through his grace, um, you know, being, we were teleworking at that time. So I was able to, you know, listen to YouTube videos or podcasts or all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, just, it's such a great resource just being able to type in assurance of salvation. I just wanted something to, you know, am I really saved? Because I, something was telling me I wasn't. Hmm. And um, there was a, Pastor called John MacArthur. I'd never heard of him. Believe it or not, you know. And I'd listen to Christian radio, and you know, growing up, I listened to you know Chuck Swindoll on the radio, and and lot lots of other people that are on the radio. And then I realize now that some of them that I listen to aren't really telling uh, the truth. They're not. They're prosperity gospel preachers and all that kind of stuff. But I'd never heard of John MacArthur before, and I. It's kind of odd as much as I'd listen to different Christian radio programs and stuff because it wasn't all like crazy party lifestyle. I mean, there was there was times intermixed in there where, you know, you try to make yourself feel better by listening to to Christian radio or mm-hmm. listening to pastors trying to hear stuff and, and everything. So anyway, so long story short, I'd never heard of John MacArthur before, though. And there was a sermon that came up called Saved Yourself to See. Well, that sounds good. Let's listen to that. Let's see what he's got to say on that. And so went through and it goes and he's, you know, there's a big part of it in there is about Matthew 7, the end of the Sermon on the Mount. 
And many are going to say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name and in your name perform many miracles and in your name cast out demons? And I'm going to declare to them, I never knew you depart from me. And I, in that moment, I knew that was me. That was going to be me mm. because I, you know, prayed that prayer hundreds of times, you know, saying, I want to be saved, but I, I wasn't one that I wasn't a doer, you know, because the, the second part of that is, um, um, he who does the will of my father will enter. Um, mm -hmm. and so I, I was a sayer. I wasn't the doer. There was no obedience in my life. There was no, there was no repentance. You know, I hear this about repentance and faith and, and faith that's, manifested in a changed life if anyone's in christ he's a new creature i was like i'm not a new creature huh. and and it it all just came god used all of that to just kind of the weight of my sin uh at that point he used all of that as just kind of to crush me uh, with my sin and I, I realized the weight of my sin and and he he granted me the the repentance at that point in my life to repent and and um, just asking him to save me hmm. and um, yeah and that's that's when I was like John chapter three says that's when I was born again I can just like that. I can put my finger back on that and and say that's what that's when it happened mm -hmm. um, just because of uh, the changed heart um, that flowed from that. Um, like before I said, you know, we would do, I went to week long uh, uh, summer, uh, Bible school. Would, what's it called? Like Bible, Bible school or something. Like, well, no, it was like church camp. That, oh, that's, church camp. that's the word okay. I was looking for, church <laughs> camp. Uh, Missionary Baptist church camp with my, with my buddy. And, you know, you'd sit there and, um, We'd sit outside, and you had to wear jeans, and you had to wear a button-up shirt, and you know these the invitations at the end of these things are like you know forty-five minutes long, and they just keep going through the song and song. And it's like somebody's got to go down and <laughs> and do something and get you know, but or they're never gonna stop. But yeah. You, so you you go through. Uh, I forget. I lost my train of thought. What I was gonna say. Um, you go through all those prayers, all those ways of trying to assure yourself. You go yourself through all that, and as, and as many of those as I've gone through and, and stuff like that, it was, um, it, and never having any kind of changed life and never having a desire to be in the Word. And I remember at, at FCA camp, um, that was when like quiet times were real popular and they were like coming into, everybody needs to, you need to have a quiet time hmm. every day. And I'd sit there and I'd try to read and it was just like... I no interest in it at yeah. all and you know it, i guess it's good stuff to know mm -hmm. you know i'm okay read through pro a chapter of proverbs every day and and just even trying to do that and it was just like no desire there and that the the big thing that i noticed after my conversion was this just desire to read god's word and to to know it and and be in it and it was it was a big change for me to not be able to not have that time to be in there every day mm -hmm. and, and learning and, and just soaking it up and, and trying to get as much as I can get. And, and so that, that was a big immediate uh, kind of thing. I just, I wanted to know more. I wanted to, I didn't want the, the old King James Bible that I had. I, I, I didn't want that. So I ordered a new NASB Bible. And I'm like, this is so, it's the way it's written is just so understandable and it's, it's accurate. You know, I was looking up what's the most accurate translation of the Bible that I can get. And so it, it, it's a, it's an accurate translation. It's easy to understand. And I'm, you know, just, I couldn't get enough of it. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and it's still, I feel like God, the last 18 months or so that I've been saved, God's like put me through, you know, I feel like I like when I was back in law school. I feel like I'm I'm studying like that, mm -hmm. just just for something that you know. Every day I've got to be in and I've got to be learning. I want to I want to know more, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And and really today it's amazing with what we have with 
YouTube and and just the Grace to You app yeah. with the way you can find a sermon on just about any verse in the New Testament. Yeah, it's a um, huge blessing to be. And able there's to stuff live. from 1970 mm-hmm. that's just as applicable today because it's the Word of God and it doesn't change. Yeah. And so it's it's been a huge blessing in my growth over this last 18 months and just because I had somewhat of a foundation in knowing the Bible, but I had never it was a desire to read. had a desire to, understand, to lead and, even read obey, and understand. Like you were talking about. Yeah. And I, I think that Matthew 7 passage is one that really spooked me even when I was younger and I was reading the Bible. I'm like, are you so you're telling me there's people in church that I go to church weekly that are involved in Christian ministry, are involved in church camp, are involved in and, and just being around Christians all the time and reading even reading the Bible here and there and praying that, that Jesus is telling them that they're not going to enter into heaven. But like you said, it's because Jesus said that you didn't do what I told you to do. And I think that's one of the marks of being a Christian or the main mark is just obedience. And that's where your assurance comes from. And I think you alluded that, to that earlier, that yeah. your assurance comes from obeying Christ because you have joy in that. You have There's a blessing in obedience and doing what your master tells you to do. And uh, Jesus even said, even if you do all the things that I tell you to do, you're still unprofitable. But that's still our goal is to please him, to honor him. And the fact that you notice that in yourself all those years, you know, you didn't read, you didn't want to really desire, you didn't have any desire to know. You just wanted to uh, please your church camp leader and then, you know, you know, be done with it. So that was, I think, I think it's a huge blessing to find, like you said, the internet, the time that we're living, you can get on YouTube, listen to a sermon, and then God uses that sermon through the internet to save you. And uses the pandemic to shut you down, keep you at home, yeah. gives you the ability to learn and, and know him more. And I think that's a huge blessing, like you said, just being able to be online and reading the word and understanding it and, and hearing good lectures, good sermons and growing in your faith. Because like you said, you just, you got to learn more. Just more being able day. to be taught because we weren't yeah. in a good church mm-hmm. at that time. We were going to Life Church, which is just a, a, a mega church where you go in and you hear uh, basically a self-help kind of message. It's a human-centered message, not a God-centered message. Mm-hmm. They they may use terms like God and, and Jesus and and stuff like that, but basically it's a it's a self-help kind of how to have a better marriage in this way. It, and and it's um, it didn't take long after my conversion of going there it was like i can't keep going here we can't keep i'm, I'm not going to go here anymore mm-hmm. because it's not the truth it's i'm listening to macarthur sermons and paul washer sermons and 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 that kind of stuff during the week and then we're going to to life church on the weekends and i'm hearing it i'm not hearing biblical preaching there may throw a bible verse up there from two different translations so that it has some buzzwords in it that the guy wants to use in his self-help message Mm -hmm. or his motivational speech or whatever you want to call that up there but it's not you're not getting biblical preaching uh, in any sense of the word and so as you can imagine it it was a matter of two or three weeks and I'm like we're done we're not going (laughs) back here we'll we'll sit at home and we'll listen to a sermon and we'll read the Bible and we can sing together but we need to find another church mm-hmm. and uh, so so how did you find that other church how did you find GCC was it through online again well it was through the, the Masters University has a church finder okay. on there mm-hmm. and I'm kind of a hard-headed guy <laughs> all right and so I wasn't real sure how it was going to go or how we were going to be able to find a church because Tulsa's got so many churches in it. Definitely. It's like you can't hit a golf ball without breaking a stained glass window out of a church <laughs> yeah. in Tulsa. And so, but most of those churches aren't good churches. Uh, they're either prosperity, word of faith kind of stuff, or they're the same nonsense that we were trying to get out of, which is kind of a big conglomeration of a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Um even I didn't want to go back to a Baptist church because that's I, I realized that it, it 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 didn't lead me well my I wasn't gonna be fed the word more than likely. So that was that was off the table. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't really know what that would leave. Uh, luckily the Masters University has um, I was I like I like this MacArthur guy, he preaches 
the gospel. He's got a seminary. Let's maybe one of these master's university graduates uh, has a good church mm -hmm. that emulates that style of preaching. So that's how we found Grace Community. And it was named Grace Community Church. That's the thing. It was like... <laughs> Sealed it for you. You know, <laughs> God, should we try this church? It's named the same thing as the the church of this pastor that I've, I've been listening to and learning a lot from. And so um, some friends of ours, Carl and Anna, started going there uh, before we did. And uh, said, yeah, it's it's good. You guys need to come check it out. And so the next week we went and uh, and uh, listened to Doug and, and Chris. And, it's and, been in love ever since. And it's, we knew we didn't have to look for another church hmm. at that point. And so um, talking about coming to Christ and talking about the actual change in behavior that I'm sure took place in your life and, and how that change can even affect your relationships with other people and the friends you had before. And I want to ask you about that in just one second. So, Luke, when you came to Christ, he said there was a change of behavior. You had a desire to read the word. I'm sure as you read the word, you started to realize I need to change a lot in my life, how I think, how I live, how I talk, how I behave around my wife, my children, even my friends. So I was just wondering, did you, did any of that change of behavior sour any of your relationships with guys that you went to the military with or any friends in your local sphere that you had? Um, I, I know it's definitely um, come between um, some of the couple friends uh, we've had. Um, just like, like right after, right after I got saved, um, really good friend, really good couple friend uh, of ours. We tried to sit down, tried to have like a Bible study together because I wanted, they, we, they went to a life church with us and I was like, man, you've got you've to get out of this church. It's not a good church. You're, you're not learning anything, you know. I shared my testimony with him and, you know, how God had saved me and just trying to I didn't really know anything at that point, but I'm trying to to express to him, share the gospel with him, um, because he was living just like I was living before, mm. and just trying to, you know, I remember breaking out in tears, you know, telling him how wow. how God had, had what he had done in my life, and mm. um, just wanted, you know, to. Wanted, we tried to do a Bible study together and that lasted all of a, a couple weeks and he always had something coming up and, and that kind of thing. And um, I bought uh, the MacArthur commentary for John's Gospel. It's a two-volume thing. And I was like, let's just read through this, you know. And he got a new job uh, where he's working out of the town during the week. I was like, well, let's call up on the phone. We'll just read through it together and, you know, maybe learn together. And so that lasted a couple weeks before, you know, it was over. And... and yeah. It's a real shame because um, he just he just got to a point where he didn't want to hear it uh, anymore and want to talk about other stuff and wow. and it, it's just really hard when you bring up even uh, even there's been some strain with relationship with my folks because mm -hmm. just trying to talk to them about um, what saving faith is like and you know my dad's position was oh you were you were saved before um, you weren't you weren't lost. You got saved when you were a kid and mm. you know, not at nobody's perfect. And you, you just fell away. It, you know, even when trying to explain how there, there was no conversion, there was no salvation. And then it kind of hit me again when he, uh, told me my, my nephew had went to church camp this summer and he said, well, yeah, it was weird. Jacob got saved again at uh, a church camp. Uh, but he, we thought he was saved before, but he got saved again. And I was like, mm. you know, I, he's, you know, he's seventh grade, I, I think. So he's right about that age. And, mm -hmm. and, and so I'm like, you know, we're trying to, trying to say, well, how do we know if somebody's saved? You know, what's, what do you look for? And you know, do you see those things? And, and so it, it really put a burden on me is to, you know, does my dad know what saving faith is? Hmm. Uh, if he, or is he, you know, did he just, does he think better of me than, you know, does he just have blinders on because he, he thinks I'm a good kid or something? But does, then, but then in the back of my mind, I was like, does he really know what saving faith is? And just trying to have those conversations uh, with him. And then, you know, eventually 
they don't call us frequently because they don't want to talk about wow. stuff like that. And yeah. so it's it's been hard. Um, so that's that's something we've been having to deal with uh, there. But um, you know, God God works and stuff, and it's it's constant thing that I've been in prayer about. So uh, hopefully, um, get the chance to to really have a real heart to heart discussion uh, with him soon. Yeah, and Jesus talked about that, I think, in Matthew 10, where he says, Think not that I came to send peace, but a sword. And, you know, I'll send a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a son-in-law against his father-in-law and all that kind of stuff because, you know, it, it divides. You know, once, once you start living righteously and you, you're striving for holiness, it's going to bring a divide, you know, no matter what, unless God is gracious to, you know, to save them. So going through, as you're going through this change over the past year, has your how has your view of marriage and and raising your children changed and, and since your conversion has that had an impact on how you look at your wife and how you look at your children and how you relate to them yeah it's had a big impact i, I know that um just that my my wife wasn't wasn't saved either um mm -hmm. and i know that um <clears throat> my my conversion led to conversations with her and and she started asking questions and I actually had answers for those questions because I was I was reading the word and and I don't know she she doesn't know when she when God saved her um she doesn't have a, a date kind of like I do I remember that day mm -hmm vividly in my mind she doesn't have that but um i know when hearing her her testimony is it happened sometime after i got saved when we started reading the bible together and we started talking about those kinds of things and mm -hmm. and uh started going to church uh, at grace and um she started actually uh, engaging with with Bible study there, uh, with the women's ministry there, hmm. and um, you know it, it, that's been one of the greatest blessings that God has done is that He saved her as well, and just seeing how our relationship is is different, and we both have this focus on on the things of, of of God now. I mean, we, we go on these road trips and we sit there and we listen to sermons the whole time <laughs> or we listen to, uh, like this most recently, we listened to to uh, Grace To You hmm. uh, podcast the, the whole time when we were on the road, but we listen to MacArthur books and, and all kinds of stuff uh, like that. And it's just great having a spouse that you can that wants to talk about these things with and you can you can have a a biblical conversation mm -hmm. uh with her because her heart's been changed because i i know what she was like before and she knows what i was like before and it was not her heart wasn't wasn't toward god either as much as mine was uh, wasn't so um it's been really cool seeing how God has brought her to uh, someone that is doing study review questions for Tuesday night and uh, memorizing scripture and um, having a love to, to do that kind of stuff. The amount, see, just seeing the amount of time that she's putting in yeah. uh, to that has been really a blessing and just seeing how as a family we're um doing bible study as a family with the kids and praying together uh as a family uh stuff that i didn't we didn't have growing up we were in church and stuff and um we never had that you know we would pray before meals and, and stuff like that but we didn't have like prayer time as a family and we definitely didn't have you know sit down and we're gonna we're gonna go through and we're gonna read and discuss scripture uh, mm. together and it's amazing what um, you know a, a third grader and a, 
or a fourth grader and a second grader um, can learn about the gospel. And so and I know when I was that age that that we weren't getting that kind of stuff. So it, it's just completely changed how we live. Uh, it seems like it. Like, man, it seems like God did it in a progressive way where he saves the husband and the father and then it moves to the wife and... And but it doesn't always that. happen like that and that's right. what was so scary with it was like is she gonna hmm. what's she gonna do is she gonna think i'm crazy <laughs> mm-hmm. or is she just gonna you know go along uh, i was real worried she wasn't gonna leave that church because oh, she had wow. so many friends that went there hmm. and uh, that was my that was what was scary i was like I'm, she's gonna be going and there were a couple weeks where i was like i'm not going i, I would urge you guys not to go uh, and she went for one or two weeks, and then after that, she was like, "All right, we're we're at. What do you want to do?" Hmm. And she got on board. I, I don't know what caused that. I guess it was God. God yeah, God caused that. But um, so thankful that He saved her, mm-hmm. uh, because like in Bible study last week, we had a gentleman testify that he got saved. God saved him, and his wife left. Yeah. Or, or right. some, had, something like yeah, that, and, and, it divorce, was, yeah. and it was, couldn't imagine. Yeah. I, I've been through that once, and, and that was all, it was horrible. Mm-hmm. And, you were unsaved uh, at the time. And so. I was unsaved at the time, <laughs> and it was awful. So mm-hmm. I can imagine how, how bad it would be. Definitely. So I want to kind of transition back to your time in the military, but now that you are saved and you have more of a biblical mindset, do you have any varying or differing views about Americans, uh, America's military involvement in foreign affairs and foreign wars and things like that? Has that changed in your thinking at all? Or how, how do you approach that biblically now that you have a kind of awakened mind to the truth of God? Um, I, I, it, was, it was nice seeing us... Um, kind of ramp down our involvement overseas and in, in some of those places that we were mm-hmm. I don't agree with the way it was done but any time that you know people are put in in danger like that and it can be um, and it doesn't need to be that way anymore uh, that, so the ending of war is, is probably a good thing mm-hmm. on, on all ends um it, it should have been done differently but you know that's we don't get to make those decisions uh do we but um i hate the fact that uh people that i could have been in with or, or something like that may have maybe over in harm's way uh, doing something because that's somebody's that's somebody's child that's somebody's dad that's somebody's son you know uh so or daughter mm-hmm. But um, war's horrible. Um, but I don't. I mean, the scariest thing for me to think back on was, you know, when I was in, if I could have been deployed, could have been killed, I would have gone to hell. Mm. I wasn't saved, and that's that's what's so scary is there's, and that kind of a special concern for me i guess is is for people that are out there that think they're saved and because they've been told all their lives and in whatever kind of church they're in that all you got to do is pray this prayer and say these magic words and you're going to be saved Mm -hmm. and and that's not what the bible says and so you have this false sense of salvation and false sense of security and just like i did then you know and if i would have died it, w- it would have been eternity in hell and and so that's that's the scariest thing but uh, you know praise god that he saved me when later in life and he protected me until then to do that so yeah that is that's i think that's an excellent point you bring out because that i mean we we honor these men and women because they are sacrificing their lives and their, and their ties with their family their children while they're overseas fighting to protect us but at the end of the day ultimately if they don't know christ they are doomed to hell like you said and and the fact that that could have been you like you said i mean that's uh you have that eternal view and that's what happens i think when you get saved you start thinking in ultimate terms you don't start thinking of 
uh, you know, things temporarily. You start thinking eternally, like, you know, these are actual men and women, actual men and women that are going to have to stand before God one day. And even being in the U.S. military, all the good that they do around the world, that's not going to earn favor with God. You know, the Bible is very clear that we're not justified by works, we're justified by faith. So I think that's definitely something that a lot of men and, and women in the military really need to take into account. And it's probably even broader now, but when I was in, it was a very broad message in the sense of the broad way hmm. that you would hear from chaplains in the military. And um, there were chaplains of every kind of faith hmm. in the military, but even the, the Protestant chaplains, it was a very broad, accepting kind of message. And, and I don't think you could you would probably be drummed out pretty quick if you were preaching a, a narrow way mm. kind of message in the military. It's just my thought, mm -hmm. uh, just based on what I saw coming from chaplains that I heard when I was in. I mean, um, I, don't, I don't think a, a real gospel message would be tolerated mm. because it would be too intolerant. Mm.